Many reacted with shock when they saw the condition of B18 after the recent stress test. But is it truly a failure? Several promising signs remain, particularly in the new V3 upgrades, which may explain why some systems still performed well despite the damage. So which upgrades are proving their value? What must SpaceX address to prevent a repeat of these issues, and how will the schedule move forward? Let's explore the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Perhaps the outcome we witnessed with B-18 was the last thing anyone hoped to see during the debut of a brand new rocket version. The arrival of version 3 carried enormous anticipation, because this design introduced upgrades that were expected to resolve many of the limitations seen in V-2. It was also expected to be the variant that would allow SpaceX to tackle several major goals, ranging from improved flight performance to more reliable recovery operations. Yet despite these hopes, the explosion left B-18 in a state that appeared far beyond repair. The liquid oxygen tank section was torn open, which exposed internal structures that were never meant to be seen from the outside. The methane tank showed clear deformation along its outer shell, and such visible damage strongly suggests that the internal components experienced severe stress as well. So does this mean the Starship V3 should be considered a complete failure? I don't believe that is the case. In fact, even after such a destructive event, the V3 design still demonstrates several important strengths that point toward real progress. The first positive sign comes from the fuel transfer tube, which is one of the most significant upgrades in V3 compared to V2. This tube is much larger and closer in scale to the one used on Falcon 9. SpaceX has explained that this component is responsible for carrying propellant from the main tank down to the engines, and its improved design is expected to allow faster and more reliable flip maneuvers as well as the possibility of starting multiple engines simultaneously during critical phases of flight. Those capabilities will require future tests or a full launch campaign to be confirmed, but the condition of the transfer tube after the incident already tells an encouraging story. Even though the explosion was severe, the tube appears to have survived almost completely intact. The only visible damage is a small puncture in the section inside the liquid oxygen tank, which is particularly surprising because this is exactly where the explosion originated. This indicates that the fuel transfer system has become significantly more durable, especially when it comes to surviving direct physical stresses. A tube built to the specifications of the previous version likely would have been shredded in the same way the outer shell was. Now, the new tube truly functions like the backbone of the booster, and this performance under extreme conditions shows that SpaceX is moving in the right direction. Engineers will still need to refine and optimize the design in upcoming prototypes, and these improvements are likely already underway. When B-19 is nearly complete, we should expect its internal configuration to reflect what SpaceX has learned from this event long before the forward and aft sections are installed. Another notable point is the structural integrity of the overall vehicle. Despite a large portion of the liquid oxygen tank being torn open and the methane tank being shifted or deformed, B-18 did not collapse. This is especially remarkable because the damaged area sits near the test tank region where propellant is loaded during ground operations. If the vehicle had collapsed, the result could have been catastrophic, not only for the booster, but also for surrounding structures and equipment. The fact that B-18 remained upright demonstrates real improvement in the V-3 frame, which appears far more capable of maintaining balance and rigidity even when experiencing heavy localized damage. This stability allowed the booster to stand safely at Starbase long enough for teams to continue working and assessing the situation. Part of this resilience can be attributed to the reinforced structural layout of V3, and part of it can likely be credited to the improved transfer tube acting as a central support. Because V3 is expected to take on missions that require higher reliability, including work related to orbital insertion, payload delivery, and landing operations, having a stronger foundation at the booster level is essential. With this sturdier base in place, SpaceX can shift more of its development focus toward the second stage, where many of the most advanced tasks will be carried out. A third encouraging sign is that the forward section of the booster, which contains key upgrades such as the hot staging hardware and the integrated grid fins, showed no noticeable damage. This is partly because the top portion had already been separated from the damaged body, but it's also because the forward section sits far from the point where the incident occurred. The lack of damage here suggests that SpaceX placed considerable emphasis on reinforcing this region, which is responsible for essential operations like stage separation, navigation, and the precision maneuvers required for landing. 
With catch attempts planned in the future, the durability and accuracy of the Gridfin area will be more important than ever. There is also an improvement related not to hardware, but to operational procedure. SpaceX chose to perform a structural stress test before moving toward cryogenic testing that would involve propellant. This decision turned out to be extremely important. By identifying a weakness during a fuel-free test, the company prevented an outcome that could have been far more dangerous. If they had rushed ahead and filled the tanks with cryogenic liquids during the previous test window, the resulting fire would have created a much larger and more hazardous event. Fuel-free evaluations have often gone unnoticed in the past because they take place quietly without the dramatic visuals that come with full cryogenic testing, but this incident highlights their value. Given all of these observations, what do you think about the positive signs shown by version 3 after the B-18 incident? Do these developments create a solid foundation for the next V-3 prototypes? Respond with yes or no in the comment section down below. Of course, even with the promising signs shown so far, SpaceX still needs to introduce several important important improvements to V3. The fuel tanks remain one of the most sensitive components of the vehicle. When exposed to extremely cold propellants, these tanks face enormous pressure and temperature stresses, which can lead to leaks or structural weaknesses if not reinforced properly. This is why the tank sections will require additional strengthening, such as protective layers or redesigned welds to prevent leaks, avoid unnecessary failures, and ensure the highest possible efficiency during flight. Just like the tanks, the internal plumbing system must also be enhanced. These pipes function like the blood vessels of the rocket, carrying fuel and oxidizer throughout the vehicle. They are vulnerable to cracks, blockages, or stress fractures, all of which can lead to dire outcomes. Even a single failure in one part of this system is enough to compromise an entire mission. Considering the scale of Starship, maintaining the health of these pipes becomes an even greater challenge. SpaceX must therefore devote considerable attention to this area, ensuring that every line, valve, and connector is durable enough to handle repeated flights. Super Heavy itself is set to undergo major changes inside the engine compartment once it's equipped with the full array of 33 Raptor 3 engines. If the B-18 incident had not occurred, we would likely have already seen Raptor 3 installed on a flight-ready booster. In Instead, all eyes now turn to B-19, which will debut the new engines. Raptor 3 introduces significant power increases, and its simplified design will transform the layout of the engine bay. To support these changes, the booster must be properly prepared to integrate the engines safely and efficiently. A foundation in the engine section will be essential for successful static fires, full duration burns, and ultimately, smooth flights. The ship requires equal attention. Although it carries fewer engines, its vacuum raptors are specialized units that must perform flawlessly in the harsh conditions of space. These engines handle the most demanding tasks, including orbital maneuvers and controlled re-entry operations. Several V-2 flights experienced engine failures that resulted in a loss of control, which means V-3 must receive extra scrutiny in this area. Ensuring the reliability of the ship's propulsion system will be crucial for reaching orbit and returning safely. The heat shield is another critical component that must be carefully monitored. It protects the ship during re-entry when temperatures reach extreme levels. Unlike V-2, where early flights served primarily as experiments, V-3 will carry the expectation of improved performance, durability, and partial or full reuse. The heat shield must not only withstand the harsh environment, but must also remain in a condition that allows for rapid refurbishment. Achieving this level of reliability on such a massive and complex system is incredibly challenging and requires ongoing focus from the SpaceX engineering teams. There are many other upgrades throughout Starship V3 that will require continued refinement. Each one is necessary not only to prevent a repeat of the issues seen with B-18, but also to move toward more efficient and reliable operation across the entire vehicle. Vehicle. V3 is more ambitious than any previous Starship design, and with every improvement, SpaceX gets closer to achieving the long-term vision for fully reusable, high-performance spaceflight. Improvements will likely begin to appear very soon. At the moment, the ship's development is moving ahead of the booster, and Ship 39 is expected to have already completed its full stack. With stacking done, it should now be going through a detailed inspection phase before moving to the Massey test site for its next round of evaluations. At Massey, the vehicle is 
expected to undergo stress testing first. This is an essential step because it ensures the ship can endure structural strain before any cryogenic propellant is introduced. Once those stress tests are complete, S-39 will proceed to cryogenic testing where its tanks and plumbing will be pushed to their limits under freezing conditions. If everything performs as expected, the ship will then return to Mega Bay 2 to receive its engines. From there, it'll prepare for its static fire test, marking the first time the Raptor 3 engines deliver a full power demonstration on a flight-ready ship. If the schedule holds, overall work on Ship 39 would wrap up before the end of December. Meanwhile, B-19 is progressing slightly behind the ship. The stacking process is being accelerated and it should reach completion sometime in mid or late December. Once stacking is complete, cryogenic testing is expected to take place near the end of the month or early in the new year. As with S-39, SpaceX will carry out careful inspections and stress testing before allowing any fuel to be introduced. This approach minimizes risk and ensures that any potential flaws are caught early. After B-19 completes its cryogenic tests, it'll be moved back to Mega Bay to receive its engines. Shortly after that, we may witness one of the most powerful tests in rocketry history, when the booster fires up over 9,000 tons of thrust for the first time. This milestone could occur as early as mid-January. With this pace, Flight 12 appears possible in late January or early February. If the flight stays on that schedule and succeeds, it should prevent major disruptions to next year's development goals. SpaceX has pushed through a challenging year. Both stages of Starship encountered significant setbacks and progress naturally slowed. Yet time and again, the company has shown its ability to turn obstacles into forward motion. Challenges are not failures. They are lessons, data, and the fuel that drives improvement. Even within the recent issues, the V3 design has shown real strength. Its bold upgrades are already laying the groundwork for a more capable Starship and the problems that did appear were caught before flight. Early discovery is invaluable. It leads to safer, more reliable missions, just as we saw after the first V-2 flights and the Ship 36 incident, when SpaceX closed the year with two successful launches. With that history in mind, there is every reason to expect a strong rebound from the B-18 incident. The first V-3 flight will not only debut a new generation of hardware, it'll mark a powerful return for SpaceX. The next leap in Starship program, in the Starship program, the next leap in the Starship program is coming. Are you ready? In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.